<laughs> well, good morning, Hagerstown Church of the Nazarene. It's good to see everybody today. How's everybody doing? Good, good. Um, a little rainy out there, huh? Little, little rain, a little rain in the area today and uh, in this, this weekend. Kind of, uh, I don't know if it spoiled any plans for you, but uh, if you're attending Fire Pit Friday, unfortunately we had to, had to cancel that one. That was kind of a bummer, but I know there was a couple events that were in, inside. I think uh, some of you went to go see the, the Gaithers, right? They were in town, so yeah, that was pretty cool, right? I heard, heard some great things about that. I think there was another uh, her conference or something that some of you went to. So that was uh, yeah, some some good things. But um, but yeah, we're uh, we're glad that you're here. Uh, for those that are visiting with us, we uh, just want to say thank you for for checking us out. We hope that you feel welcomed and uh, glad to glad to meet you. Uh, for those that are joining on our live stream, we're glad uh, that you are joining with us as well today, and uh, we're uh, we're excited to to worship the Lord today. Uh, here in a little bit, a little bit later in our service, we're going to be uh, partaking together with communion, the Lord's Supper. And so um, if you didn't get um, one of these little cups and wafers, they are actually in the back. There's a little bowl back there. And now would be a great time if you want to make your way back there. I know sometimes we just come on in and we, we forget about them. And, um, but we want to make sure that you have that for, for later on in our service. That will be a great time together. And also, uh, for those who are joining on the live stream, it's uh, just a reminder for you as well. If you want to want to gather whatever you have to, to take with us, that would be awesome. All right. Well, we are gonna we are gonna kick things off with a call to worship this morning. So um, I'm gonna invite anyone who's able and willing, uh, if you will stand with me, and I'm gonna read out of Psalms 100 for us today. To get going, and then we are gonna we're gonna worship the Lord together. So, hear the word of the Lord. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful sounds. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, and the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. That has been so true and it continues to be true today. So let's, uh, let's together as one church, as one voice, one body, let's worship the Lord with gladness this morning. All right, it's so good to have all of you here this morning. Uh, those of you online, we are so happy to have you joining us. And we're going to start this morning with a little praise and worship. So let's get those hands together. Yours will be the only name that matters to me. The only one whose favor I see. The only name that matters. is the name.
show your love to people that are hurting and that have needs that need met, God, and we ask you just to show them your love and comfort and provide for them, Lord. Um, We trust in you, and you always make a way, and yes, God, you are more than able. 
people. And we love you and we give it all to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. How I long to breathe the air of heaven where pain is gone and mercy fills the streets. To look upon the one who bled to save me and walk with him. Let's pray together. God, what a, what a joy it is to sing songs of worship with all the angels in heaven. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> Lord, that we get to come and we get to worship you, not only in heaven, but here on this earth, God, in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the brokenness and the fallenness of our world, Jesus, we 
we can still lift up our voice in the midst of it, knowing that you have conquered this world and that you are coming back for us, Lord, and this will not be the end. We thank you that this life doesn't end with the grave, Jesus. We thank you for eternal life that can only be found in Jesus. And Lord, uh, we just want to say thank you for all that you have done for us, God. Uh, when you came down to us and you became one of us and, and you lived this perfect and blameless life and you went to that cross and you, you died on that cross for us, for our sin, God, for our brokenness, for the things that we could never repay, you repaid, God. And uh, Lord, you made right. And because you did that, Lord, we can sing today. Because you did that, we have hope today. And that hope is found in your name, Jesus. So Jesus, thank you for your presence that is here with us, that stands behind us and goes in front of us. Thank you that we are not alone, that no matter what it is that we're facing, we know that we're facing it with you. And we take comfort in that today. Lord, you know our hearts. You know our thoughts this morning. You know what we've done this week, how we've fallen, how we've honored you. God, you know it all. And Lord, we just, uh, for the things that we got wrong, uh, Lord, we do admit those. We do say that, uh, God, we are fallen and broken people, and we are in desperate need of our Savior Jesus to come and renew us and to help us, give us strength, help us to battle those temptations when they face us, God. And, and Lord, this week, today, Lord, help us to battle those with you, God, with your power, with your spirit. Lord, for the seeds that have been planted this week, for the conversations that were had, that pointed others to you, God. We, we just pray that you would help them to grow, God. Um, Lord, for those uh, individuals that we know in our life that uh, don't know you yet, Jesus, we lift them up to you and we call out their names and we just say, Jesus, would you meet them where they're at? And would you maybe use us if you want to use us or if you just want to just speak to their hearts, God, wherever they are, we just pray that you would draw them closer to you, God, that you would help them to realize their great need for you and how much you desperately love them and are pursuing them, Jesus. God, our hearts are also with those um, in Florida and South Carolina and just those areas that have been hit with this, uh, this hurricane this week. And uh, Lord, we know that a lot, of, uh, a lot of lives have been impacted. And Lord, there's a, there's a long road ahead for many. And uh, Lord, we just pray that you would just Continue to be there um, to help those people get back on their feet, um, to be with those who are mourning, who are grieving their losses. Um, God, just comfort them. Lord, I pray for the church, that the church would step up, that the church would be involved, that the church as they already are, but help, the, help us to just serve and to love and to give and to pray and uh, just be a light for those people. Um, any way that we can help, God, help us to, to do that. Help us to see the needs all around us and uh, be your hands and feet, Jesus. Lord, we just pray for our service and our time together today. And we just pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to each one of our hearts. Lord, that you would use the words that are in your scriptures to just penetrate our hearts, um, to, to teach us, and to make us more into your image today. So have your way with us, Lord, and uh, God, just do what you want to do today. And uh, we just uh, praise you, we glorify you, and we pray this all in the powerful and the holy name of Jesus. Amen. All right, I want to invite the uh, children to come up this morning. We have, um, our, this is our family Sunday. And our second, third, and fourth graders are going to stay with us in the service. So come on up if you're a kid. All kids can come for, just want to share a little talk with you today. You have a seat right here on the floor in front of me. I'm going to get down here with you. Everybody have a seat. 
So good to see you. You came out on this rainy morning. So glad you're here. Today, um, so if you're a second, third, and fourth grader, you'll be staying up. Um, and in my sermon, we're going to talk about this guy in the Bible. His name is Jeremiah. And Jeremiah is sometimes, he has like a nickname. And if you look up on the screen, you can see a picture um, that might kind of remind you of Jeremiah's nickname. And um, he is called the weeping prophet. So weeping is another name for crying. He's like the crying prophet. And I thought I would just ask you as we begin to think about Jeremiah and why he was crying, um, I thought I'd ask you, what makes you cry? What makes you cry? Yeah, if you raise your hand, I'll let you talk into uh, this microphone number 36 here. Do you have an idea what makes you cry? I thought, okay, Naomi. Okay, do we have this on? It's on number 36, it says. Okay, hello. Okay. <laughs> when, somebody, when somebody tackles you? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> somebody tackled you? Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. And he jumped on you. Wow. Okay. Okay. So when something, so when someone hurts you or um, when your pet dies, like there's, you, you're very sad because of that. Can anybody else think of any reasons that you, you cry? Okay. Okay. Like if a family member is going through a hard time, is that what you mean? Like if they're having a hard time. Okay, so it's not just when it happens to us, right? It's when it happens to somebody that we care about. So, you know, if, they, if somebody hurts somebody that we care about. Does anybody else have any ideas? What makes you cry? Okay, so when someone uh, is in the hospital, yeah, yeah, and they're sick, so that can be sad. All right, Did anybody else? Okay, well, those are some very, very good things. So we talked about when somebody hurts you, like tackles you. Um, we talked about when we're sad, like if our pet, a pet dies, that's very, very sad, and it might call us, cause us to, um, to cry. When somebody's sick, like in the hospital, or someone that not just we're sick, but somebody that we love is sick, or somebody gets hurt, Aiden said, yeah. Okay, well, Jeremiah, I want you, if you're going to be up here for the sermon, um, Jeremiah, we're going to learn, uh, was crying because he had, he had to give, God told him to give very bad news to the people he cared about, that they were going to be punished by God. And so we're going to talk about that today. And so God said, go to these people and tell them that if they don't, start living in the right way, I'm going to have to punish them. And that broke his heart that he had to tell that message, uh, the bad news to the people that he loved. So, so be thinking about that. I hope you'll kind of, if you're staying up today, I hope you'll kind of listen to the message. Before you go, I want to pray, pray for you, okay? Dear God, thank you that you're a God who's with us when we cry. And whether it's people being mean to us or our hearts being sad because something or someone that we love is struggling or has died. Um, we thank you, thank you that you are a God who is good and faithful to us. And, uh, and you're a God who cries with us, the Bible says, that you weep with us. And so I pray that you'd be with these boys and girls, that you would just guide their lives and bless their families. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so... If you are in uh, first grade or younger, so pre-K through first grade, you can go on down to uh, Children's Church. And if you're second, third, and fourth grader, you go back and sit with your parents. Okay? Okay. So you can sit with your parents. Uh, our sermon and hear from the weeping prophet. Uh, we are going to uh, just share a few announcements with us uh, today and some ways that we can 
um, be the church and, uh, and be involved and, and get connected and meet some needs. Um, the first one I want to highlight is um, obviously the, the Hurricane Ian relief. Um, I know, um, you know, just seeing some of those devastating reports and uh, seeing those, those images and videos and, you know, hearing some of the stories, we know that they need a lot of help. And so if you want to uh, donate towards that, uh, we are collecting uh, money to be able to send out to the Nazarene Compassionate Ministries uh, that will go down there. Uh, to support those in, in need. Um, and so if you would like to donate, you can just mark um, a check. Um, just mark that for hurricane relief, and we'll make sure that it gets it gets there. And um, you can put those in, in any offerings or ties that you have uh, this morning. You can put them in the boxes in the back, or you can give online through our app or um, through the website. Um, those are ways to, to give in that way, too. Um, we also... Um, I know Karen Yoder, our women's ministry director, uh, she has uh, some resources uh, from the Simulcast just um, a couple weeks ago, and so uh, she's uh, keeping that open and seeing if anyone wants to take advantage of those. There's a lot of great resources out there, so maybe as you're heading out today, maybe you can stop by and check out that table and see if there's anything that you want to, uh, want to get there. Uh, we also have a work day uh, coming up this Saturday. Uh, we're going to be helping uh, three families in our church that have um, some needs that uh, they're just not able to physically do. And so if you um, are available this Saturday and would like to help in that, I know uh, my dad, Keith Little, he's the men's ministry director. He uh, is looking for some people. He might be reaching out to some of you, especially you guys, maybe. And uh, maybe if you want to help uh, be a part of that, just let him know. And uh, that would be a great way to just serve some of our, our families in need. We also uh, have a Foundations of uh, Faith class coming up, so for those who may be new to our church and um, curious about what our beliefs are and, and what we think on different things and, and how, how we came as a church and what, what our mission is and all those good things, um, we are starting a, a four-week series on that uh, after church on Sunday, just right out here in the foyer, and it starts next Sunday. So if you're interested, you can let me or let Pastor Steve know, and we will make sure you get all the resources uh, and everything for that class. Um, but that's also if you are interested in becoming a member. So maybe you've been here your whole life, and now you're like, mm, I, I think I want to I do that. Um, we invite you to come be a part of that class as well. Um, we also, uh, at the end of this month, we have a teen fall retreat uh, that we do where we get away and we learn uh, about God, and uh, we have some teenagers that are really interested about this, uh, but we actually also have some teens that, uh, for financial reasons, uh, are not able to do that unless they have some resources, and so um, we, I just wanted to put it out there to a church family, if there's anyone that um, we would want to give to that to make that retreat available to them. It's $100 per, per person, um, but you certainly don't have to give all that. But any, any little amount would help um, make, it, make it possible for some of our teens to go on that. So if you're, if you're uh, looking for a way to be a blessing, that's a way to do it. Also, I know some of you are teen prayer partners, so maybe you could uh, just text your teen and see if they're going to it or if they want to go, and you could see if they need any help with that. That would be um, a huge blessing to them. And lastly, we have a trunk or treat coming up on uh, October 30th. It's going to be a Sunday night, 5 to 7 p.m., and it's a great time just out in our parking lot where we invite uh, people from all over the community and uh, come and we pass out candy and hot dogs and uh, hot chocolate, and it's just going to be a great night um, together with our community. And so um, we obviously need some help uh, to do that. Some donations with candy are needed. Or if you want to come out and be and serve or uh, do a trunk, uh, we are still looking for, for people to, to sign up to use their car trunks uh, to decorate uh, themes. We have fun with it, so uh, we'll keep it family friendly, but it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. So we encourage you to come on out and, and be a part of that. So um, those are just some of the things that we have going on. There's obviously a lot more. I only talked about the highlighted things. And so there's, there's a lot more going on in the life of the church, which is good. Um, so we encourage you to check check all those things out and look for the ways to, to get plugged in. All right, I think that's it, and I'm going to turn it over for Pastor Steve. All right. If you want to take your Bibles, uh, today we're going to start a series of messages, I, I believe, on the book of Jeremiah. And... Um, the weeping prophet, of course, a prophet is like a, it's like a preacher, pretty much uh, the same. Sometimes they, God also gave them insight into the future. 
But we're going to take a look at, at Jeremiah today. Um, today we're, um, today we're uh, going to be taking communion at the end of my message. I think uh, Pastor Kevin already reminded you to get your communion uh, little cup. And um, I don't know if I have mine, actually. Pam, do we have ours? Pam. <laughs> yeah. Antonio, would you get one for Pam and me, please, as well? Um, but yeah, this is a good time to do it. You don't have to be a member of our church to uh, take, take communion. Um, but it is important that you've opened your heart in faith to Jesus and um, know him as your Savior. So anybody who's done that is, is welcome. Can you give me one of those? I need one. Thanks. Okay, all right. <laughs> I don't know about throwing communion cups. That's, <laughs> is that? <laughs> not sure about that. Um, all right. Well, let's stand together uh, if you're able to stand this morning. We're, we're going to look at Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse, verse 1. The words of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, one of the priests at Anathoth in the territory of Benjamin. The word of the Lord came to him in the thirteenth year of the reign of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah. And through the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah. Down to the fifth month of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, son of Josiah, king of Judah, when the people of Jerusalem went into exile. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young. You must go wherever I send you to. And say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. For the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I've put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you see, Jeremiah? I see the branch of an almond tree, I replied. The Lord said to me, you have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. The word of the Lord came to me again. What do you see? I see a pot that is boiling, I answered. It is tilting toward us from the north. The Lord said to me, from the north, disaster will be poured out on all who live in the land. I am about to summon all the people of the northern kingdom, declares the Lord. Their kings will come and set up their thrones at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. They will gather against all her surrounding walls and against all the towns of Judah. I will pronounce my judgment on my people because of their wickedness in forsaking me, in burning incense to other gods, and in worshiping what their hands have made. Get yourself ready. Stand up to say to them whatever I command you. Do not be terrified to, by them, or I will terrify you before them. Today I have made you a fortified city, an iron pillar, and a bronze wall to stand against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. All right, you may be seated. Well, whenever, uh, whenever I hear the name Jeremiah, I can't help but think of a song that has the name Jeremiah in it. It was a song that was popular when I was in high school. In fact, I think that uh, I think our high school band actually played this song for a, a halftime uh, show for our football team. Um, I didn't know when I was a teenager much about the guy, this guy named Jeremiah, but I, I knew I knew the song and. It was a song about, a, you, I can tell by the look on your face that some of you didn't know what song I'm thinking about. It's a, the guy, his best friend was a bullfrog. That's right, a bullfrog. 
And the bullfrog's name was Jeremiah. It was sung by a band called Three Dog Night, and it was called Joy to the World. And the opening line of that song, probably you, a lot of you could like sing it. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. He was a good friend of mine. I never understood a single word he said, but I helped him a drink his wine. He always had some mighty fine wine, which, of course, makes absolutely no sense, you know. <laughs> whoever, thought of, whoever heard of a wine-drinking bullfrog? <laughs> that's, that's crazy. But I guess what do you expect from a group called Three Dog Night? Because that really is, doesn't make any sense either. What's a three-dog night? I, I don't know. <laughs> what does that even mean? Well, over the years, um, I actually took a class in, in this book, um, when I was in school, and I learned that Jeremiah wasn't just a bullfrog, but he was one of the great prophets, courageous, faithful prophets of God. Let me give you just a little bit of interesting background on the book of Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah has more words than any other book in the Bible, so in that sense, it's like the longest book of the Bible. Jeremiah was a PK. Do you know what a PK is? How many of you know what a PK is? Okay. You usually think PK, okay, pastor's kid, but actually it's a little different with Jeremiah. He was a priest kid. His dad was a priest. He actually was a um, was was priest. It was like a pastor. Um, it says when Jeremiah's call came to him, he says, well, "I'm too young." And the one thing that's interesting here is that the word "too young." It can be used for a kid. So when Jeremiah was called, he might have just been a little boy. Or he could have been a teenager. Or the word can mean like a young adult, like in his, in his 20s. But the, he was a young guy. Uh, we're not sure of his, his age. He says, I'm too young. And we're not sure exactly what that means. Um, so he started when he was very young. And he was a faithful preacher, prophet of God throughout the reign of three different kings, as we read in the Scripture, for more than 40 years. His was a lifetime of faithfully serving and follow God. And as we said with the boys and girls, he's um, often called the weeping prophet because his, God's call to him was to go to the nation that he loved and the people that he loved and say, God is going to punish you. God is going to pour out his judgment upon you. And his heart was broken. We'll talk more about that as he proclaimed this message of God's judgment being poured out on him. And that, that would happen through uh, a time in the history of Israel called the exile when they shipped them off. And we're going to talk more about that. Jeremiah, it's, his times were somewhat like ours, which I think is what kind of God led me to this book. It was a really chaotic time. It was a time of great division, uncertainty about the future, times like our times. He was definitely a lot more than a wine-drinking bullfrog. So when he was a young guy, kid, teen, early 20s, God spoke to him. And that's what we find in our Scripture today, God calling Jeremiah to convey his message. And, and the core of his message is there in verse 9 and 10, verses 9 and 10. And if we can look at that, look at that Scripture. Then the Word, then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I put my words in your mouth. He's going to tell God's words. He's going to speak God's words. I put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over the nations and kingdoms to do six things. There's six verbs here. Verbs are action words, right? Six things that God's going to do. Uproot, tear down, destroy, overflow, and then it changes. There's four destructive words and then two rebuilding words, to build and to plant. So God says, I'm giving you my words, Jeremiah. I'm going to tell you what I want you to say. I want you to speak the very words of God. And I want you to go to people. Jeremiah had access to people in high places, rulers of nations and kingdoms, people to speak my words. 
So the, there's these six words. These six, six four of them are, are destruction. Uproot. Uproot. This year, I shared with you, I planted a little garden in our backyard. And it's just about done, right? You know, it's starting to wither away. And one of the jobs on my to-do list is to go out there and, and yank up those tomato plants and put them on the burn pile. I'm going to yank them up. We're, we're done with them. We're done with them. And so Jeremiah says, God says to Jeremiah, I want you to tell them, I'm, I'm going to uproot them. And to tear down. So this is a construction word. It's a farmer's word. I'm going to tear you up by the roots. I'm going to tear, tear down. I'm going to take God's word. will be like a sledgehammer bursting down the walls. I'm going to destroy. I'm going to overthrow. I'm going to shake up the leadership. This is what God is going to do. Words of judgment, words of destruction. Okay, so first thing I want to say today um, so we kind of give you something to kind of hang the message on today. So God pours out his judgment on sin with a broken heart. God pours out his judgment on sin with a broken heart. God says to Jeremiah, I'm giving you my words of judgment and coming destruction that I want you to speak. You'll go out and you'll talk to kings, officials, priests, the people of the land, and tell them if they don't turn back to me, there's always hope that we can, they, the nation can come back. If they don't come back to me, they'll be uprooted, torn down, destroyed, and overthrown. And then God got, got very specific in, in our passage. He said, verse 13, God gave gave Jeremiah a vision. He said, Jeremiah, what do you see? And Jeremiah said, I see, a, I see a boiling pot, this big pot. And it's, it's boiling, it's boiling and boiling. And God said, that's the, that's the nation to the north of you. And Jeremiah understood, that's Babylon. And King Nebuchadnezzar up there, things are boiling up there. God says, I'm about to spill the pot. <laughs> you know what happens? Scalding water, right? About to spill the pot on your country. About to pour it out. You're going to be burned. You're going to be shaken. Pot is boiling. It's tilting toward us from the north. God, verse 14 Jeremiah said, the Lord said to me, from the north, disaster will be poured out on all who live in the land. In verse 16, God says, I will pronounce my judgments on my people because of their wickedness in forsaking me, in burning incense to other gods, and in worshiping what their hands have made. So the boiling pot was an army. The only part was an army that was, that was forming under uh, King Nebuchadnezzar's leadership up in Babylon. It was to the, to the north of Israel. And they were preparing to sweep down and destroy the capital city of Jerusalem and their temple where God was worshipped. And they would, they, this would happen. Jeremiah is predicting these things. This would happen, that the army would sweep down, take the prisoner king, and, and, and all the leaders of the land would be shipped off as the exile. They would be taken out. Well, why would God do this? And so in verse 16 there, um, we're, we're told why. Because of their wickedness in forsaking me. God says, they've turned their backs on me. They left me out of their lives. They're living in disobedience to my commands, which is wickedness. It's interesting that today in America, the, uh, they, they take surveys of people's religious perspective, and they, they, they say, well, what's your, what's your religion? What's your religious preference? 
And they give like a list, of course, of Christianity or Muslim faith, Buddhism. And then at the bottom, there's like none. And they've traced, they, they've traced the pattern and the, the, the fastest growing, we'll say, religious perspective. They've even given them a name. I have a book on my shelf. It's The Nuns, not N U N, <laughs> like none, nothing. <laughs> What's your religion? Nothing. Today in our country, if they've done surveys on the religious perspective of Americans, the fastest growing one, nothing. I'm nothing. What they tell us is that it's not so much that people don't believe in God, although that number is growing, but they've rejected the church. And so we're having to find new ways of reaching out, new ways of connecting and showing Jesus to the people for a variety of reasons who've been turned off. We know of some of the negative things that have happened in churches these days. They've forsaken me, God says. They've burnt incense to other gods and, and worship what their hands have made. Well, at least we don't have any idols. At least we don't bow down to statues. Or do we? Well, maybe not statues, but... We sure don't bow down to a lot of man-made stuff. And, and I know people today who their career is more important to them than their God. They spend more time taking care of their house and their car than thinking about loving God. Their sport, their hobby is the focus of their love and attention more than their love for God. Around money is what I get up in the morning for, not much, giving much thought to my God. Even good things like family can become my God. And so we may not have statues that we bow down to, but we have our idols that we've given our time and attention to above our love and service to God. So a modern-day update of the story of Jeremiah would be, would say, God would say, Jeremiah, I'm sending you to Washington, D.C., and I want you to walk through the hallways of the Senate and House Office Building, the chambers of the U.S. Capitol, Supreme Court, Court, Court Building, and I want you to warn them that unless they turn back to me, and go to everyone, unless they turn back to me, I'm about to pour out my judgment on their nation, call my people to turn back to me before it's too late. But we see that it's important to remember that as Jeremiah conveys this message, he's called the weeping prophet. And there are passages that we'll look out at throughout Jeremiah where he talks about, my, my, eye, my eyes were like a fountain, he says. They're just, just pouring, tears were just pouring out. As God gave me the job of conveying this message of punishment upon the nation and the people that I love. He's often, Jeremiah is often considered to be the prophet that is most like Jesus. Because Jesus wept tears as he looked at Jerusalem. Jesus was brokenhearted over how he was rejected by the very people he came to save. And today I'm sure that God's heart is broken over the fact that so many people that he loves have turned their backs on him and have left him out of their lives, loving other things more than they love him. And I wonder this morning, if God's heart is breaking because of you, that you've left him out of your life. 
So first, God pours out his judgment on sin with a broken heart. And then here, here's a second lesson from Jeremiah. That God loves you deeply and has a plan for your life. As he comes to Jeremiah, this young person, God says to him, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Now, when God says, I knew you, it's not just like, yeah, I knew who you were. But the word that's used for knew there is a, is a deep friendship, deep personal friendship. God says, even before you were being formed in your mother's womb, I loved you. I devised a plan for you. And this is one of the many verses in the Bible that teaches us that, that unborn life is sacred. Jeremiah, even before he was conceived, was set apart to be dedicated to God. Before any person was born, God had a plan for you, for your life, to use you in fulfilling the mission and purpose of Jesus in the world. So this, this reminds us that, that all human life is holy and sacred, not just pre-born life, but that homeless lady holding the sign at the street corner saying, anything helps, or the drug dealer. Holy, sacred human life. The bully on your bus, <laughs> your grumpy neighbor, holy and sacred human life, created with, by God with a plan in mind. Another place where Jeremiah um, hits on this, one of my favorite verses in the Bible and one that we, we love a lot, Jeremiah 21, 29, 11. Um, this would be a good one for us to read together. Would you mind just reading it out loud with me? Um, read this. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. It's always a better day with God. We look forward to a hope and a future. So throughout his life, Jeremiah would convey this message of Babylon's armies coming down from the north and attacking their beloved city, Jerusalem. And it would be, it became, it would happen. It was a day of great destruction and devastation. And, and Judah's kings were overthrown. They were taken captive. They were shipped off to Babylon. The temple was left in rubble. The walls around Jerusalem were destroyed. But in that, and always, Jeremiah conveys a message of hope. At any point, they could repent. They could turn around. They could turn back to God. It was never too late. It was never hopeless. And even as their city lay in rubble, there was hope. And so we get to those last two words that we talked about. And as we get to the end of Jeremiah's message, there, there, there's a shift, and he begins to say, you know, God's going to build back your nation. He's going to plant new seeds of life and hope. Those, your plants were uprooted, but now God's going to plant some new seeds. And in many ways, the book of, whole book of Jeremiah foreshadows what Jesus did for us. There was death, right? The death of the, on the cross. He, he died in our place. But that wasn't the end of the story. And just as Jerusalem would be obliterated and, and destroyed, and Jesus, three days later, would, would raise up from the dead, right? To, to new life and new hope and new life and joy and peace. And Though the king was taken away captive, there would be a new king, right? A new king in town. And, and he would be the king of kings and lord of lords born into a, a manger in Bethlehem. 
and, and he would reign, his kingdom would reign forever and ever. And so God says to the young guy, kid, Jeremiah, in the closing part of, of this chapter, as, as he faced chaos and uncertainty, God's judgment being poured out. Look there at verse 17. God says, get ready. Get yourself ready. Stand up. Say to them whatever I command you. Good word for us today. Do not be terrified by them, or I will terrify you before them. Today, I've made you a fortified city, an iron pillar, a bronze wall to stand against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, officials, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you. I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. So the, my final point this morning is, Live courageously and live hopefully. Live courageously and hopefully. God's message to us today through this young guy, Jeremiah, is stand up and be strong. You don't have to be afraid. Live courageously and hopefully because God is the God who builds back and plants new seeds of life and joy. I love this quote from uh, E. Stanley Jones. If we get it up on the screen, e. Stanley Jones was a Methodist missionary to India, um, a, a wonderful godly man. And he pointed out that early Christians did not say in dismay, look what the world's come to. But in delight, look what has come to the world. That hits home with me because I, I have conversations with people and they're pretty regular. It's like, oh, pastor. This world is such a mess. It's so terrible. I don't know what's happening to our country. It's, it's falling apart. It's, it's unraveling. It's terrible. It's so bad out there, Pastor. And, and they're not wrong. They're not wrong. But what, what the Scripture is pointing out to us, what E. Stanley Jones reminds us of is that the state of the world isn't the focus of our attention. Jesus is the focus of our attention. And yeah, it's a mess. But our gaze is fixed on Jesus, who is God come into the world to save us. Our confidence is that Jesus has come into this sin-broken world to bring healing and hope. And he died to save you. So you could experience forgiveness and new life. And he rose. He's alive. He conquered sin and death. He's given us the Holy Spirit to guide us and teach us how to live in these perilous times. Our God lives within us. He helps us to stand firm and courageously. Jesus conquered sin and death. He's raised us to new life by faith in him. Ours is a God of victory and joy. Yeah, it's a mess. But that's not where we look. We look to Jesus, who is alive and is working and will come again and set all of the wrongs of this world right. He calls us to live ready for his return, faithfully serving and waiting and watching, because it could be at any moment when Jesus splits the skies to take us to where he will be. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., the civil rights leader, was a young preacher. Things were just getting started in the civil rights movement. He was down in Montgomery, Alabama, and they were getting started on the, the bus boycott. And he'd been put in jail for the first time. And he was embarrassed that, that he, a preacher who had been put in jail, and he, and he got out and he came home to his wife and his little newborn baby girl. And he, he wakes up in the middle of the night. He, he can't sleep. He gets up, he's sitting in his kitchen, and he sits at a cup of coffee. It's right around midnight, and the telephone rings. Voice says, 
The phone says, if you aren't out of town in the next three days, we're going to blow your brains out and we're going to blow up your house. Click. And he thought of his baby girl and how he might feel if she got hurt. And he cried out to God, God, this is not what I bargained for. But he said, but in that night, God became real to me. And he later wrote of this experience, sitting over my cup of coffee, I bowed down and I prayed out loud, Lord, I'm down here trying to do what's right. I think I'm right. I think the cause that we represent is right, but I must confess that I am weak, Lord. I'm faltering. I'm losing my courage. I think Dr. King felt a lot like Jeremiah called to announce God's judgment on a rebellious people. King realized he was only beginning his work of the civil, for civil rights. He said, God spoke to me and said, I am with you, Martin Luther. Don't be afraid. Keep preaching righteousness and judgment, and I will be with you. Even to the end, well, we know that he was jailed many more times and he received many more death threats and was eventually assassinated for his work. But what sustained him through all the trials was the assurance that God was with him. The same thing that sustained Jeremiah, the same thing that sustains you and me as we seek to be faithful to God in a mixed up, seemingly out of control world. Well, Jeremiah is not just a bullfrog. Jeremiah's life challenges us to live as courageous, obedient people who live faithfully for God in a time of great chaos and stress. Let's pray together as we uh, prepare to receive communion this morning. Lord, in just a minute, we're going to join together and receive this Lord's Supper today. And in these moments, we look around at our world and don't mean to minimize the, the stress and the struggle and the chaos. Today we look to you, our King of kings and our Lord of lords. You're the God who sustained Jeremiah as the armies of Babylon destroyed his beloved city. You are the God who came in the flesh. crucified and through your son Jesus is now risen from the dead we pray in these times that you would you would forgive us for the areas where we may have doubted your promises where we have neglected your word forgive us if we have turned our back on you and have been more focused on our stuff than your plan. Come, Lord, and fill us afresh today with your spirit that we might have the strength to, like Jeremiah, live courageously and faithfully and filled with hope. not in the state of the world, but in the faithfulness of Jesus to us, the unchanging faithfulness. And so, Lord, it is a joy today to gather around your table with your people and receive the bread that reminds us that your body was broken for us. 
and the wine that reminds us that your blood was shed for us. Lord, we pray that you would draw near to us in this time, and may this time that we have together strengthen us as we seek to be faithful to you. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. I invite you now to take your, your cup. And if you pull the, you can get the little wafer on the top. And the same night that our Lord was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. He said, Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you. And be faithful. Be together. And you can pull back the foil. And then he took the cup and said, this cup, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which was poured out for you. Take and drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you, and be thankful. Lord, we thank you as we taste the wafer and the juice that, that Jesus is in us. We thank you that you come to bring hope and new life and confidence. Strengthen us, Lord, that we might live with faith and live faithfully, courageously in these days. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that we have a Savior. Thank you that you forgive us. In our weakness, in our brokenness, thank you for your healing grace. We praise you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to invite you now to stand, and we're going to sing a closing song together.
Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, worship team, for leading us in worship this morning. Um, I've picked up a book before church. I'm kind of excited about it. It's called Unshakable 365 Devotions for Finding Unwavering Strength in God's Word by Christine Kane. And uh, we're going to have to send all those books back and pay postage on them. So maybe think about Christmas or something like that, and um, maybe maybe take something home with you to be an encouragement. We have Sunday school classes right after uh, service today. Let's bow our heads together for prayer as we go. Lord, send us out now. Give us courage and strength to keep our eyes focused on Jesus, to allow your spirit to each day fill our lives. And may we live in a way that honors you. Thank you for your grace and mercy that forgives us when we stumble. We are grateful that you give us strength, that you give us hope and courage, as you did Jeremiah. May we go in the power of the Spirit of our risen Christ. Amen.